Hello and welcome to another VetraCore AV and today we're going to be taking a look at these Axia Normal Position Cassettes and we're going to be looking at them in order of quality from the worst to the best. Well I say worst but it's probably, probably still going to be really really good. So first up we have the JZ1 or the JZ1 and this is the bottom of the line apparently well out of the ones I have. If we take a look at the back of the casing we can see here that the bottom of the line is the A1 version followed by the JZ. Then we've got the PS and the PS1X and the AU1X. All right. So apparently this is the worst one, but I reckon it'll still perform pretty well. So that's that. Then we have the UP. Now the UP wasn't on the list on the JZ cassettes, but if we take a look at the back of the this one, no, not the back of that one, on the back of this one, okay, we can see that the UP is listed as part of the PS series. So I'm guessing that this is lower in quality than this. So anyway, yeah, we'll be taking a look at the UP and then we'll be taking a look at the PS1. Now I actually have two versions of the PS1, the PS1 normal and the later PS1S. Now this is basically just the same tape, the S stands for slim. So we're not going to take a look at that. I've already done a video on this one, which you can see in the link in the video description down below. Okay. And then finally, we'll finish up with the AU1X. This is meant to be the best normal position cassette that Axia pr produced, or at least at this time frame anyway. So this should be the best of the bunch. Okay, so it is a little bit confusing, but what, what we're going to do is take a look at the actual cassettes themselves. So first up is the JZ1 or the JZ1. Let's open this. I do like uh, this neon look they've got going with this uh, cassette. It's very uh, cool looking, isn't it? All right, so let's give that an open. And can we slide that out? No, that's already ripped anyway, so... I got more of these, so it doesn't really bother me too much. Let's just uh, get that open. All right, let's uh, move that out the way. Okay, and we'll take a look at the cassette itself. Now, look at that. Isn't that a lovely looking cassette? It's blue. We've got those classic big Axia hubs in there. Nice blue shell. Pretty well made. And yeah, we've got the little stripe on the leader there, which axes are known for. Let's wind the tape on and see what color it is. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it's uh, a pretty decent chocolatey, chocolate, cho chocolatey, I can't even speak anymore. Chocolatey brown color, hmm, not too bad. Let's take a look at the J card. Okay, so yeah. Nothing too special there, just a typical J card with a, we've got some sort of weird space pattern going on. Some stuff down the bottom, yeah. And the stickers, mm, feel a bit cheap really, just printed onto grey paper. And on the back we've got the typical Japanese instructions. Alright, so that's that one. Alright, let's uh, put this over here for now, we'll put that at the back. Okay, next up in the quality ranking was the UP. Or was it? Yeah, I think it was the UP that was next. Okay, this is an Oli Axia cassette, and I only have one of these, but uh, yeah, I suppose I'll have to open it up, won't I? But, um, I think the cassette's gonna look pretty cool in here. Let's, uh, let's get that tear strip. Uh, nah, that's not gonna come off, is it? It's stuck on there. Oh well. Wow, that is really stuck on that. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now this isn't in a slim case, mainly because it's one of Axia's old cassettes, but uh, yeah, it still has the Axia brand there on the actual casing. Can you see that? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, taking a look at the cassette itself. Whoa, now that is a nice cassette. Look at that. That's a beauty, isn't it? I like the way it's got the little marks down here, the little uh, pattern on there, and it seems to have a flathead screw over here. 
No, it's just discolored. <laughs> it's with good gunk on it. But yeah, but that's uh, it's a pretty nice looking cassette, isn't it? Not bad at all. Let's see what color the tape is. We've got the uh, typical stripy leather that Axia tapes are known for. And this one's actually uh, quite stiff to roll on, actually. So uh, I hope it's... Uh, there we go, it's uh, freeing up now. Man, this is a tip. It's, it's... Wow, it's a tough tape to roll on, this one. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, another typical brown looking cassette. Nothing too special there. Okay, let's take a look at J card quickly. Now uh, we've got a nice big sticker sheet in there. Not too bad. Take a look at that. It's reasonable. And we've got a nice big J card as well. Nothing too special. Just typical looking J card. Okay. Let's put this over here. Okay, next up in the ranking is the PS cassette. All right. Let's take a look at this one. I got loads of these things, so I have no problems opening this. All right, and just look at that, another beauty. Actually, I really make really good looking cassettes, don't they? Wow, take a look at that. That's a nice looking one, isn't it? I love the kind of uneven looking window there. Hubs are smaller than typical Axia though. Um, you got the text up here. It's actually printed on the plastic, so it's not on the slip sheet. It says Axia stable tape running mechanism, double coating. So expect some good stuff from here. All right, let's take a look at the actual tape. Now this one doesn't have the striper lead, the stripey leader on it. And, ooh, can you see that? This one's gone a little bit rusty on the metal. Can you see that down there? It's gone a little bit rusty on it. Ugh. I hope the tape's okay. The tape looks fine. All right, let's wind this on. Okay, let's take a look at that. Ah. Now that's something different. That's slightly richer looking brown, isn't it? Compared to the other two. So we should expect that where they're having a double coating. All right. And let's take a look in the slim case. It's not a J card, it's more of a... Actually, I do like this case. The case is smoked. So it's got a nice smoked black case there. Uh, let's see, it's typical stickers. And we got some <laughs> seasons written down there. Nice, volume one and two. 95, 96, 97. And the J card itself has some nice prying eyes looking at you. Hmm. Don't know if you'd call that a J card, would you? More like an L card. All right, let's get that back in the case. I do like these slim cases, they're nice. And I'll put the tape over here. Okay, so finally, the cassette that's meant to be the best, the AU-1X. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Again, this one is double coated, but it seems to be triple coated according to the back over here. Hmm. So let's see how this one looks. All right, let's get that open. It's enough one, it's not gonna slip off, is it? And again, another Smoked case. Yeah, I do like these smoked cases. They're really nice. Yeah, see that? Smoked Axia case with the Axia yellow go embossed on the case. Good stuff. Okay, let's take a look at the cassette. Yep, that's another beauty, isn't it? Another classic, beautiful Axia cassette. Again, we've got the original looking window there. We've got the massive Axia hubs and yeah, double coating. This is good. What's it say up here? New, gen new generation sounds for music fans that begins a whole new era in audio. Mm. They're really uh, pushing this double coating, aren't they? <laughs> Down here as well. Double coating and AER mechanism. All right. And this one does have the leader on it, the stripey leader. So let's take a look and see what color this cassette is. I think it's going to be darker. No. It's another chocolatey, chocolatey brown color. Okay, let's get them all together. Okay, starting from the top one. Okay. So this is the top one. This is the cheapest or the lowest grade. That's the Jay-Z. 
This is the UP and this is the PS1 and this is the AU1X. And yeah, they all seem quite similar apart from the UP, which is the older cassette. Interesting. I do love the way that all they all have the original colors. So we got the blue, we got the transparent, we got a very dark navy looking grayish blue there. And we also have the black. All right. Top of the black, we didn't take a look at the J card, did we? Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Nothing too special about that. And the stickers. Yeah, fairly cheap uh, looking stickers there. Master and copy and the typical Japanese instructions on the back on how to take care of your cassettes. All right. Let's get these lovely axias into the machine. We'll start off with the lowest quality one, the JZ1. Okay, so let's get the tape in the deck and calibrate it up. All right, let's see, calibration. And here we go. Mm, not bad. Okay, let's just adjust the bias down a little bit there. Or up a little bit, should I say. Okay, next to record levels. No, no, back down this way. Okay, and the recording EQ. That's how it should be done on this deck. A bit more bias there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that'd be that'd be uh, good enough. Okay, stop that. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, some music from the YouTube audio library. This track is called Club. Interesting. 
probably not the best cassette I've heard from Axia. Um, but not surprising considering it's one of the bottom of the range ones. All right, let's move out over to the next cassette. Okay, so next up is the Urban Planning cassette or the UP cassette. Okay, let's get that in there and let's bias it up. Okay, calibration. Okay, here we go. Ooh, <laughs> that is very different than the last uh, cassette, which was uh, on standard pretty much there, but this one isn't. Um, okay, so let's get the bias going first. That's the first thing you do on this deck. Okay, whoop. Wow, okay, spot on, almost. Next is the recording level. Let's get that moved over, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, that's in. And then the recording EQ. It's, uh, yep, yeah. recording level back a little bit. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much on there, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so the next track is also from the YouTube audio library. This is End of Summer. Better than I thought it would be. Um, it did seem to distort on the bass a little bit, didn't it? I mean, we were peaking it quite a bit. We were pushing it a little bit too hard and the high ends were not there, but it was a very quiet cassette. Did you notice when the volume faded out on the track? You could hardly hear any hiss. That's a pretty quiet cassette, that. All right, not bad. Okay, next up with the cassette I expect to perform the best out of all of them so far, it's the PS1. Okay, let's get that in there and um, let's get everything back to normal. Okay, let's bias this baby up. Oops, <laughs> would help if I stopped the music, wouldn't it? Okay, calibration. All right, and let's get this calibrated up. Hmm, okay, turn down the bass a little bit. Oops, go on the wait, <laughs> turn it down. Yeah, recording level. Okay, and then the EQ. Hmm. This is a tough one to bias up. Let's get that back down a bit. Hmm. Eh, that'll do. Okay, so 
Time again for another track from the YouTube Music Library. This time we're going to try a track called Inevitable. Wow, now that was pretty good, wasn't it? That double coating has worked pretty well on this cassette. Yes, it was peaking at six and I didn't hear any distortion whatsoever. And at the beginning when there was no music playing, it was pretty quiet as well. So yeah, good performing tape. Okay, let's move on to the last one, which is meant to be the best one. Here it is, the Axia AU1X. Okay, let's put this in and let's bias this one up as well. Okay, reset everything. Okay, uh, let's, let's bias it up. Hmm, this one doesn't need much adjusting by the looks of it. Yeah, okay. And get the EQ back up. Yeah, we'll call it a day. Okay, so yet again, another track from the YouTube Music Library. This time the track is known as Skullfire. And this one should push the tape quite a bit. I told you that song would push the tape, didn't I? 
and it pushed it well. That's a good normal Ferreric tape, the AU1X. It was peaking at six, not one bit of distortion on that. Yes, the high end wasn't as good as the source, but it handled the bass really well and it didn't distort. I do like this one. This is the best of the bunch easily. No wonder it's ranked at the top of the range. So there we have it, an Axia Ferreric range. And I gotta say, the tapes performed in the order of quality that they're meant to be ranked, with the JZZ being, JZZ with the JZ one being at the bottom of the pile, followed by the UP or the Urban Plan Concept. What a weird name for the cassette. Being the next one up, then the PS1 and the AU1X was the top. That was the best cassette. That performed really well. I mean, it was really, you know, taking some levels and it didn't distort once. Really nice. This one too. In fact, both these cassettes were very low noise as well. They had good um, low level hiss on them. Uh, this one, yeah, I mean, it's a decent entry cassette, but nothing special. A little bit muffly. Uh, yeah, not too, but not too good. This one did distort, but I think that's because this was, uh, you know, taking uh, the levels a bit too high for the tape inside. And also it is the oldest cassette. But one thing I do like about this cassette is the shell. The shell is rock solid. That is a one solid shell on that machine, on that cassette, on that machine. Yeah, so props for the uh, shell, but yeah, the tape stock inside is not the best, but not too bad. But anyway, I think you buying any of these Axia cassettes will you know, please you, not bad cassettes at all, and they all look really cool. Okay, until next time guys, take it easy, and we'll be taking a look at some Sony cassettes. Keep on taping and enjoy your music. See you guys, bye.